I'll be showing eight new features in Microsoft Teams. This includes a new search experience, the Q&A app, the new Viva apps, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is a significant overhaul of search in Teams, and this makes it much easier to find things. I'm here in Teams, and up at the top, there's a search bar. I'll click here, and I'm gonna search for a certain term, which is TPS for TPS reports. Now hit enter. Here's the new search experience. It used to be all crammed in on the left-hand side, but now it's much more laid out. I can see top results. I can also do things like search across messages, or filter by people, or by files. I'll go to messages. There's a bunch of new filters right here. So I can filter by type. So if I just wanna look at the channel versus chat, I could do that. So I only wanna look at channel here and I can close that exit out if I wanna go back. I can also search across teams and channels and I can filter by from and date. So I click here, I can type in a certain name. So in this case, I'll just type my own name and this will filter all of the messages that have TPS across both chats and channels. Clear that out. I can look for specific at mentions of myself. None for that. Messages that have an attachment. Well, there's a bunch right here. And if I wanna clear everything, I just click clear all. Now the specific messages themselves, I can go here and I can click this little arrow and it shows other conversations that might be related to these messages. So here's one that has me and Alex and Arden. I can click to go directly to that message. So in this case, I will click to go. And this takes me right into a chat where we're talking about TPS reports. I'll click the back button. Now in this case, I'm looking for an attachment about the next gen TPS report designs. So I'll click has attachment. Okay, this one is the one I think I'm looking for. It's in the general channel. I'll expand this. I'll click go to message. Oh, and it's highlighted it in yellow. Here's that message. And there is my next gen TPS report design. The second new feature is the just launched Q&A app that you can add into a Teams meeting. This allows you to really easily manage questions and answers during might be a webinar or other large meeting where there's a lot of questions happening. Now I've set up my meeting right here as the organizer. I'm gonna click it and I'll choose to edit. Now this is before the meeting starts. I will go up to the plus menu and there's a new app called Q&A. And if you don't see it, just search for it right here. I'll click Q&A and then add. This is the setup screen that you'll see for the Q&A app. So first you can say, yeah, I wanna allow attendees to ask new questions and respond to conversations. You can choose to turn these on or off during the meeting or before. I'll leave them on before the meeting starts. This one here, allow organizers to moderate attendee conversations. If I check this one on, I cannot turn it off once the meeting starts, but I'm gonna do this for allowing moderation. Now I'll click save. What this does on the meeting organizer side is it adds this Q&A tab. Now you have a sense here of what you can do. So there's questions that are in review, there's questions that would be published, and there are questions that I could dismiss. So if I'm the moderator, I have the choice to review questions, publish them, and dismiss them. I can also drop this down, and you can ask a question or start a discussion. And I'll show how these things work during the meeting. So my Q&A tab is already as the organizer, and I'm gonna click Join. I'm here in my meeting, and I have Ella and Alex, and we're gonna try out the Q&A feature. What you'll see is in the top, there's this little Q&A icon, and that is what I added just before the meeting. So I'll click this. Now the pane has opened up, and there are no questions that have been asked so far, but I have a feeling that Alex is gonna ask one. I'm signed in as Alex, and I'm a meeting attendee, and I'll go to the top here and click Q&A. This opens up the Q&A panel for the attendee side, and so I'm gonna ask a question. Click here. And here's my little spot to ask my question. When is the drop dead date that I have to start using these new TPS report cover sheets? And I'm gonna highlight this part here and choose bold. You can also do indent. If you hit the three dot menu, you can add links, you can add bullets and other things, but I'll keep it pretty simple right here and click post. Now, because I'm an attendee, I have to have the organizer go and approve that question. So I'm gonna flip back now to the organizer account and show how that works where I will publish a question to my audience. I'm signed back in as the organizer and as you can see, Alex's question just popped up under my in review area. So I can publish this or I can dismiss it. Maybe it's an inappropriate question, I'm just gonna dismiss that. If I go to the three dot menu, I can also just delete it. But in this case, I'm gonna publish it because this is a very important topic. So I'll hit publish. Now, if I click on the publish tab, you'll see Alex's question is there. And because you know I, I'm a big fan of TPS reports, I can give that a thumbs up. If you hover, you can have a bunch of different reactions, but I'll give it a thumbs up. I could also comment right here, and I'm gonna just answer this question and respond. 
tomorrow's the drop dead date. And I have the same options here, bold, italicized, and adding links and other things. So I will post the response to this question. Now other people can respond as well. Other people can give it a thumbs up and they can have other options. You know, I'm the organizer, so I have the chance to mark as the best answer because sometimes there's a lot of answers and my answer is the best. So I'm gonna mark that as the best answer. Woo, and then you get a little check mark like that. The other nice thing Q&A allows is the ability to start a discussion. So I'll go here and drop this down and I'll say start a discussion. So I'm gonna start a discussion on a very important topic. In the spirit of Bill Lumberg with Office Space, this is the who wants to work this Saturday. I'm sure everyone's gonna be excited about that. So hit post and there is my new discussion topic. I'm sure everyone's gonna love this discussion. Let's see how the responses roll in. Oh, look at this. There's already two new comments to my discussion. Let's see what they said. Oh, Ella wants to come in on a Saturday. I'm gonna give that a heart. And so does Alex. Man, I have such a great team. They're all excited to work on a Saturday. The last thing I'll show is the three dot menu here. So I have the ability to edit, delete, close the conversation or pin it. I'm the organizer. I'm gonna pin this conversation about Saturday. It's so important. So I've pinned that to the top of the questions. Now to wrap up, I'll show what this looks like in the Q and A tab of the meeting when it ends. So we'll close the meeting. Now as the organizer, I have access to all the meeting details afterwards. And right at the top, there's a Q and A tab like we started with. If I click here, now I can see all of the same things I saw in the meeting. I go to published. Here are the questions that we were working on. If you had dismissed topics, they'd be here, the pinned area, and other people can come in here as well. So you could even have questions happening after the meeting. The third new feature is word cloud for your forms poll in Teams meetings. Now I have a meeting I've set up here and I'm gonna go to the plus tab and I'll choose forms. And if you don't see it, just search for it. Now I'll click save. This sets up my forms tab. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join the meeting and create the new poll in the meeting and then we're gonna gather responses to show that word cloud. So let's join the meeting. I'm the organizer in this Teams meeting and at the top you'll see the forms app that I added. So click this. Now I'll go down and click create new poll. You'll see this new option, word cloud poll. Visualize open text responses in a word cloud. So let's click this. Let's give it a question. What is your favorite color? Then click save. Now as the organizer, this is left in a draft state and I'm ready to launch this, let's go. So my answer of course is purple and I'll click submit. Now immediately I can see I'm the only response, one response and purple is really big and I can hover and get the number. It also shows up over here in the sidebar. Now I'm gonna go and have other people respond really quick as well. Now back as the organizer, I can see three responses and if I hover, I see two purples and one red. But you can imagine if there are many different responses, your word cloud will be very distributed and it's really great to gather all that information really quickly. When you leave the meeting, you will also have that copy of your word cloud poll right here in the meeting under polls where everyone else can see it as well. The fourth new feature is transcription support in channel meetings. Channel meetings are very popular in the education world, but also there are some in main commercial organizations. So I've got a new meeting here. I've given it a title and I'm gonna add a channel to make this a channel meeting. So I'll expand this here and I'm gonna put it in the project team red channel and I'll click send. This creates the meeting in my calendar, but I'm gonna switch over to the team and show how to launch the channel meeting there and then do transcripts. So let's go to the teams and project team red. Now here is that scheduled meeting for transcripts. It's in the channel. I'm gonna click it to start it up and now click join. Now I'm in the Teams meeting and I'll go to the three dot menu and here is a choice to start transcription. I'm gonna choose start recording which will also start the transcription. So click start recording. There is a bar across the top and the transcript pane has opened and now as I'm talking, all of the transcript is captured. If there are other people talking as well, their name will appear next to it just like normal Teams transcription works. I'll dismiss this and now I'm gonna stop the recording and the transcription. So stop recording and the transcription. Now I'm gonna leave the meeting and just show briefly where that meeting recording and transcription shows up afterwards for that channel meeting. So I'll leave and we'll close this. Here I am back in the project team red channel and you can see that not only does it have the attendance report, but the meeting transcript is right here. And if I click this, it opens up this transcript tab and the entire transcription is right here and anyone can view it later. You can also download it as a VTT file or a Word document. And one note, 
your IT administrator may have to enable the transcription across your tenant in general. So make sure to go to the link in the description for how to enable transcripts in your tenant. The fifth new feature is the just launched Viva Learning. Viva Learning helps employees make learning a natural part of the day and brings it into the flow of work and tools that they already use like Teams. To find Viva Learning, go to the three dot menu here and type in Viva and then choose Viva Learning. Here's the welcome screen for Viva Learning and this is the main page. So we're greeted right here where you start, you can pick your interests and we'll do that in a moment. You can browse different courses. So LinkedIn Learning, if you have a subscription to LinkedIn Learning, you can use those. There's M365 training, there's Microsoft Learn training, which has a bunch of different courses, including our educator community, which is on the path to move into Learn right now. In addition, if your company has other courses, they have the ability to plug those into Viva Learning. So in this case, I'm gonna pick my interests. So accessibility, I love that one, collaboration, and maybe leadership and I will click save. Now based on my interests, it will surface these different options. So these are some LinkedIn learning courses. I can also scroll down and based on my interests, here are more courses right here. You can also filter by duration. We have under 10 minutes, 10 minutes to 45 minutes, or 45 minutes to two hours. Now any course I can hover on, and maybe here's a favorite. Okay, that one looks interesting. I'll go up here and I'll choose this one. And then there's a nice looking collaboration course right here and I'll click that. Now on any of these courses, I can go and click into it. Here's a learning path on Microsoft Learn. I've got related courses. I can look at this in the browser, I can share it and it pulls in all the related courses from Microsoft Learn. If I go back, I'm now gonna go look at the courses that I bookmarked. So I had bookmarked three courses if you remember earlier, I'll click here. And this is now on the My Learning page. Here are the three courses that I bookmarked. I can look at ones that I've viewed, I didn't look at any others, or ones that I had completed. I can also search on any topic. So I'm gonna go up here and search for Teams. You get a real-time search list right here. Oh, Teams on the go, that one seems good, let's go here. Now here is a Teams on the go course that Microsoft offers and I can just hit play right here. And now I can go right through this course. And there's different modules on the left-hand side. So now I can have all my learning right here within Teams in Viva Learning. So I'll close this and I'll go back to the home screen. Now there are a much deeper set of features with Viva Learning. This is just rolled out. Hopefully this gives you a high level sense of how it works and your company or organization can go with premium SKUs and have even more capabilities to integrate with LMSs and other learning management systems that your company might use. The sixth new feature is an app called Viva Insights. So I'm gonna go to the three dot menu and type Viva Insights, and I will click this, improve your productivity and well-being. Viva Insights is a new employee experience app that is again built into Teams and takes a lot of the same techniques if you've seen some of the things around reflect and well-being in education. This is more about a corporate or organizational view or a staff view if you're in education. And there's a set of activities you can do. One is a simple, how are you feeling today? And this is just for yourself. Your reflections are private. Hey, I'm feeling pretty good today. And so I can take a reflection and even see a history. So if I click here, I've only done one, but I can track how I've been feeling over time. During pandemic work, feelings can be up or down. And so there's a lot of things you can do just to track your own emotional state. Another option is sending praise to your colleagues. Sometimes when we get really busy, we can forget to do that. So I'm gonna click send praise. And I want to send out an awesome unicorn praise to my great coworker, Alex. So I've searched for Alex here. Now you can choose to send it one-on-one -on -one in a chat to Alex, or you can send it to the team. You know what? I want to send this to the team and tell everyone how amazing Alex is. So I'll choose the team right here and we'll put it in the general channel and I'll add a personalized note. You are so awesome. And I'll hit preview. That's what it's going to look like and hit send. Fantastic. I've just sent that praise to Alex. Let's hit the back button. Viva Insights also does things like recommending you to stay in contact with certain colleagues. I was like, oh, you know, I haven't stayed connected with Arden. During, again, the pandemic, you're not seeing face to face. I'm gonna get reminded to work and collaborate with Arden right here. So I'm gonna mark this one as important. I wanna make sure I stay connected with him. Another important one is booking focus time. This falls under the protect time tab. It's also up here. So I wanna make sure that I have extra focus I'm gonna book a two hour block on Friday to give myself focus time. 
I have some options, but I'll just click book now. I've booked that time. If I want to see more options, I'll click here. And this takes me into the protect time tab. Here's another suggestion, but I'm going to show all available times. And this looks at your calendar and gives you some options and you can change these too. So I'm going to leave this as focus time. I could choose to edit the title or not, but I'm going to book a time right here and I'm going to book another time right here. So this is a great way to keep yourself focused and not let your calendar explode with meetings. The seventh new feature is the ability to turn on and off mirroring video for your Teams calls. So I'm getting ready to join my Teams call and if I go to settings here, you're gonna see a new option that says mirror my video. By default, it is mirrored. This is what you see right here. If I turn this off, oh, now it's switched and my hair is parted on the other side. So you can mirror yourself or not. So I'll turn that on and I'm back again. The eighth new feature is Clippy in Teams. I saved the best for last. And here's a message about the big TPS report status meeting. And at the bottom, I'll click reply. Now go and choose stickers right here. Click it and the sticker dialog launches. If you scroll down, you'll find Clippy. Click on here and look, there's our little friend. All of the great things that Clippy always offers. He is so helpful. I'm gonna scroll down and find my favorite, the classic, it looks like you're writing a letter. Would you like help? Hit send. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.